I was in Chicago last night, Tim. My my first time back in a while. I've been doing the Hawks cast this and that, but I was on the main show and it was a big game. Lots of layers to this. Alex Debrinkit back in Chicago. Patrick Kane back in Chicago for the first time since being traded to the Rangers last year. Huge deal. Everything trumping that was Chris Chelios was getting his jersey retired for the Chicago Blackhawks. He played there nine seasons only. Holds all kinds of records. Most PIMs all time in Chicago. Top 10 of points and this and that, blah, blah, blah. The guys loved. I didn't know he was born in Chicago. Born, raised, won multiple championships there with minor league hockey and high school hockey and this and that. So they love him in Chicago. He lives there currently with his family. Guy's got like five houses all over the world, but he has one in Chicago. So that was a big deal, the big Jersey retirement. What made it so different from other Jersey retirements, Tim? Chris Chelios is a celebrity. He, he, he's not just in the hockey sphere. You know, you think of celebrities, you go, okay, it's going to be a hockey thing. There's going to be a lot of hockey players there. It's going to be really fun, mostly from the Hawks. No, this extended out to the celebrity stratosphere. They had a, a dinner the night before that I didn't get the invite for because I don't know Chris Chelios from, you know, you. I know him a little bit, but not much. I work with his daughter, Kaylee. So we have been sort of building this friendship. I guess the dinner was bonkers. There was celebrities everywhere. And then it followed into the next night when he had his jersey retired. They had a three o'clock ceremony. The Hawks did it first class. I sent you a picture, I think, Tim, of what was going on. But it was it was legit. He get up there. He spoke for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And then it was after the game. Or during the game was fun, too, because they started showing who was there. And I was trying to write everybody down who was there, but it was, it was a lot because every commercial break that would show someone on the jumbotron, it's like, holy cow, he's here. Where is he at? So I'll do, oh, let me catch my breath. It was Wayne Gretzky. It was Mark Messier, Dennis Rodman, Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam, um, Duncan Keith. There was Seabrook, Hosa Sharp, John McEnroe, tennis player, Gary Souter, all former Hawks, Belfour, Savard, um, Jeremy Roenick, Tony Amante, Ty Domi, um, Sidney Crawford. Uh, supermodel um the doctor from the scrub show the older guy he he would always go no 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 that guy i really liked that guy super funny um eiserman theo epstein from the cubs gm brian mccabe keith carney and then a bunch of other people i, I was just there was too many to write down like ray ferraro was there and all these other so that was cool during the game they do the big ceremony. Sidney Crawford does the shoot a puck at center ice. She nails it. it. It was just, that was a cool moment because she is one of those people who everybody knows her. You know what I mean? She She's just almost like a, a Mike Tyson or a Michael Jordan type where she just is known throughout the world. She was in the era of just supermodels. Maybe a little bit, a little bit older than you. Were, did you know her, Tim? I knew the name, but no, she was before my time when she was doing her thing and when she was that celebrity figure. I had a poster of her on my wall. No kidding. I don't know where I got it or how I got it, but I had her poster on my wall. And so when I found out she was there, I was like, I, I have to meet her. Like, I have to. And then she's shooting and she buries it. Nobody else come close to getting it in the hole. And I was like, this is so cool. So you fast forward, we'll get back to the game because it was a very exciting game. There's a lot of layers there, too, with Kaner and everybody. Oh, I will say this about Chelios' speech. So it was kind of neat. He almost passed the torch to Kaner because Kane's sitting on the bench. And he goes, Kaner, you know, I went from Chicago to Detroit. The jersey looks a little weird, but you'll get used to it. The next time you'll be here, your, your jersey will be being raised to the rafters. And everybody started thinking, yeah, probably will. Like, it, it's kind of neat that he was there. Kane was there watching him from the bench and then there's duncan keith up in the press box who probably will he have his jersey retired in the next two or three years so there's a lot of there's a lot of people there tim it was pretty fun but you know but they're fast they, today they're telling their friends and family hey you know who was there last night john scott john scott no, was in the building they're yeah. definitely not <laughs> they're definitely not saying that but uh, i did the after party was where it was all at so i had to do the post game for the Hawks. So we're rushing through this, me and Pat Boyle. Then Pat's like, I got to do this this Hawks podcast. I'm like, damn it. He's like, you want to do it with me? I'm like, I don't, but I will. And so we did that. That took another 10 minutes. So we're we're an hour behind everybody at this point. So we go down to the party and it's VI, VI, VIP. You have to have a 
password and you have to have a wristband, neither of which Pat and I have. So we're sitting at this door trying to get into this party and he took over the whole atrium of, of the United Center. They, it's just this huge enclosed entrance where the Michael Jordan statue is. It's it's massive. So they took over that whole area. We're trying to get in. There's fans talking to me, trying to get pictures. The, the security is trying to get all the fans out of the arena so they, they don't have to deal with them anymore. So finally, we get a hold of Kaylee Chelios. She gets us through the doors and we walk in and it's just like, Ma! it was it was so bizarre to see all of these Hall of Famers just hanging out, like just shooting the breeze. It was so incredibly weird. And so I, I turn one way, there's Mark Messi. I turn one way, there's Ray Ferrara. I, I turn somewhere else, there's Jeremy Roenick. I turn around this way, there's Ty Domi. I turn, like, it was incredible. And then I didn't know if my, my teammates were there, my old guys. And I come around the corner and there's Duncan Keith. And he's always like very standoffish. I'm like, hey, Dunks, how's it going? And then I go and talk to Marion Hosa. So it, it was just, it was so surreal to be in that environment. And I, I, ha I was telling Tim a funny story before we came on. Steve Eiserman is, um, is there because obviously he played for Detroit and played against Chelios. I think he played with Chelios, won three cups with them, two cups with them. And so he's talking to Pat Foley, Hall of Fame announcer for the Chicago Blackhawks, who I'm friendly with. And Ray Ferraro's there, Cami Granato, who Ray Fer it's Ray Ferraro's wife. And there's a couple other guys who are in a circle. And I'm doing my goodbye rounds because it's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at that point. I still had to drive back to Traverse City. So I'm like trying to get out of there, but trying to do it in a polite way and also trying to like get my face in front of these guys. Like, hey, John, <laughs> nice to come on my show. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big uh, a simp. Um, and so I'm shaking everybody's hands and Iserman turns around and doesn't want to shake my hand. I, I don't know if he did on purpose, but I think he did because he did the same thing to me in the press box. When I was going to do the post game show, he was there with Yuri Fisher. And I know Yuri Fisher because remember we met him in Detroit, Tim, at yeah. the GLI in the basement. Yeah. So yep. a huge defenseman still works for him. And I said, Yuri, remember me? Five, six years ago, we were in the, you know, the Joe Lewis. I saw you in the base. He's like, Johnny, how's it going? And we said, we're chatting. And Eisman's right beside him. We lock eyes and he turns around away from me. And I was about to go, good game tonight. You know, good signing with Kaner. And he turns around. He like walks towards the elevator. And that was my first inkling. I'm like, does he not like me because of what I say on the show? I'm like, no, no. Well, fast forward an hour and a half later, 100%. He knows what I say about him on the show, how the Yeiser plan is a joke and he ruined the team and this and that because he, Tim, it was so obvious. I'm shaking all these cans. I'm like, Pat, it was great seeing you get a great job. Congrats on everything. You know, oh, Ray, he introduced me to his wife and who else was there? I, I think it was Domi. I was like, hey, man, you know, I, I'll see you around. And then, I go to like say hi to Steve and goodbye and like congrats and this and that. He just turns around. I'm like, you. <laughs> is, it was really is funny. There, is there any reason other than you know you bashing the Iser plan that he might be standoffish to you? Like, because he wouldn't have like just big leagued you because that was the setting you no. were in with to say hello and that was it, right? No, it's not like you were well, a fan. I coming think up he's. I think he listens to the show. Or at I, least I he's heard the clips. Yeah. I like to think he listens to the show. <laughs> hey, Steve. That, that's right. I hang my hat. I'm like, he's listening to it daily. And I, I've been very critical of him. So maybe he either saw a clip or this and that. But I, I think he's heard something. And he's like, this prick says, I yeah. don't know what I'm doing. I'm not shaking his hand. Rightfully so. But it was my first taste of how this podcast bleeds into real life. Where I'm like, oh, he, he knows what I say about him. <laughs> like, I, I always assume nobody listens to this. You know what I mean? And I can say whatever I want. And now I, I, I'm coming to the realization that it does see, seep out into the real world. And people hear well, it well, and they well. don't like it. Yeah. There it is consequences. The of my actions. <laughs> <laughs> it was just funny. And then the same thing happened. All the Hawks players started to come in. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been trashing these guys pretty heavy, you know, throughout the year and even on air. And like the first guy I run into is Jared Tenorti. I'm like, oh my God. Who you got traded for, right? Who I That's got a... traded for. Yeah. And so, and 
he played bad. Like he was icing the puck left and right during the game, and I was just ripping him. Like okay, <laughs> and so <laughs> I just like I just tucked my tail. I'm like, hey man, like you got. And I I was polite and I would just said hi. I've never met him. Like we got traded for each other, and he's like, yeah, that was crazy. Like I wasn't even playing in the NHL and. Yeah, you ruined my life. Um, <laughs> so it was just, it was really, it was really funny. It was all cordial, but you, yeah, it was just funny. It was uh, another moment. I, I'll, I'll get off of this in a second, but I got a text during the game from somebody. I'm like, hey, they're like, great job. You should stay with NBC for a long time. You're going to sign long term. I didn't know who it was. And so I just ignored it. That happens. I got a new phone. I got an old new phone. So the storage wasn't enough to hold all my numbers. So I had to just really make some hard decisions. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm going to the elevator to go up to the press box and there's Connor Murphy. He's like, oh, you don't respond to my texts? I'm like, I didn't know you texted me. He's like, check your phone. I'm like, oh, I didn't save your number. <laughs> He's like, you're <laughs> such a jerk. So here's this NHL player. I'm just like big dog. And then I run into him in the elevator. So that was kind of funny too. We should get him on the show. Um, who last, He's from last right night? Now. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Even better. Who was who was, were you most happy that was excited to see you? Who was like, man, Dunks is really you know. I just said Dunks kind of standoffish, but who else would that be? Um, I, I want to say Hosa. We we yeah. were always really close when we played together, and I, I saw him. We locked eyes, and he's like, Johnny, what are you doing here? So I went and I, I chatted with him for quite <laughs> a long time. Here? Who let you yeah. in? Yeah. yeah, right. So I'm like, why are you here? Because they did everybody on the Jumbotron. I'm like, I wasn't a part of it. And yeah, you know those so, things, <clears throat> like in college, when they, they, people go around like, hey, who do you know here? And if you can't answer, they give you the boot. That's, that's what he was doing to you. Yeah, he's hey, like, who do you, who do you know? know? How did you get in? Yeah. <laughs> How did you get in? He was fun. And then all the old guys, like it was palling around with Ed Belfour and stuff like that. Jeremy Roenick, I talked to him for quite a bit. Once the Eddie Vedder concert started, I just wanted to watch the show. I, I missed out on seeing him in college. He was playing in Marquette <clears throat> and I just didn't want to drive over there. And I regretted it and regretted it. And I finally got to see him play. It was, it was a whole Pearl Jam band and it was pretty incredible. So that was, that was a lot of fun. I just locked in on him. So, but all in all, it was just like, it, it'll never happen. And it's like Dennis Rodman's bouncing around. He's like, no one knows where he is. He like, you hear the stories and you watch like the last dance and like all this stuff. It's all real. Like it's all real. Like it, he was gone, absolutely gone. And then like, it's just crazy. All the stories that they told, like those guys used to go out all the time, <clears throat> all the time. And then what they would do is they would go to the rink. They would put a bicycle in the sauna and just bag themselves to sweat it out. And it's just, crazy to hear these hall of famers just nonchalantly talking to 20,000 fans in the United center going, Oh man, we used to like one playoff game. We went out and we just got bombed and, you know, we had to sweat it out the night before, but Shelly came out and played fantastic that night. And we beat this team in the playoffs. I'm like, are you guys crazy? Like, it's just, it was a different world. Pre cell phone, pre anything. It was just, it was amazing. And they talked like that was the normal thing to do. And every story they told, everything that every every story, uh, you know, we're just hanging on having a couple of cocktails. Every story started that way. Every one. <laughs> it was just it was just pretty, pretty neat to hear. And then I'm like, you were you were married the whole time, Chelly. Like you got married after college, like I did. And he's like, ah, I'd follow Rodman all around town and we'd go on this uh, three, four in the morning. I'm like, what does your wife think? Like she's sitting right there. How is this like, were you guys cool? Was she with you? I just wanted to like pick his brain. Like your kids are my age. So they like, you had kids at this. It was just, I just didn't want to stir the pot, but I'm just like, it was pretty, it's a different world. 